This battery costs $1,300. And in today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you why it costs $1,300, and then I'm going to blow it up. What is happening? It's not lighting off, it's just deforming itself. The charger is still charging. I can't believe it. I can't believe how, I can't believe it hasn't gone yet. Oh! <laughs> That's the most violent battery explosion I've ever seen. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. This particular battery is made by Upgrade Energy. They call it the Dark Lithium Gold. But what makes it so special is not that it's made by Upgrade Energy, although Upgrade Energy does make a very good battery. What makes it so special is the cells that Upgrade Energy is using inside this battery. Like most battery manufacturers, Upgrade Energy purchased the cells from a cell manufacturer and then assembles them into a pack that you can buy. And the cells that are in here are truly a generational leap forward in lithium battery technology. The cells in here are from a company named Amprius. They are the Amprius SAO8 cell. And what makes them unique is that they have a silicone anode. And I actually learned the technical details of silicone anode cells from none other than Hank Green. If you know Hank Green, you know he is a nerdy guy, kind of like me, uh, but not like a super expert in battery technology. And yet his treatment of the silicone anode cells was amazingly accurate and concise. In fact, I'm gonna give you like the high level overview and then we're gonna light this battery on fire and see how much comes out. Uh, but I'll link his video, Hank Green's video down below if you want a little bit more of an in-depth picture. Uh, and what makes this battery so interesting requires us to talk a little bit about battery construction. So inside a battery, there is a cathode and an anode. And lithium ions are stored on the cathode. And then when you discharge the battery, the lithium ions move from the cathode over to the anode. And usually the cathode and the anode are made of graphite. They're made of a matrix of carbon molecules and the lithium ions fit within that matrix of carbon molecules and therein lies the reason why these batteries are so much better. You see, it normally takes six carbon molecules to hold one lithium ion. You've got this matrix structure and the lithium slots in there, if you will. Uh, and that means you've got a lot more carbon in the battery than you do lithium ions. With a silicon ion anode battery, you can get one silicon molecule for every four lithium ions. You can get a lot more lithium into a silicon anode battery than you can into a carbon anode battery. A lot more. And that means that for a given size and weight of battery, you get a ton more milliamp hours. Uh, for example, this Upgrade Energy battery weighs 1.3 kilograms, and it has, take a look at the label, 21, 21,000 milliamp hours. If you compare that to something made from a traditional cylinder cell, like the MolyCell P50B, a 1.3 kilogram MolyCell P50B battery has about 15,000 milliamp hours. So about 25, 28% less, and that's a fair jump forward. Uh, if you compare it to a traditional lithium, lithium polymer battery, uh, it has about two to three times the milliamp hours for every gram of weight. Now this does come with some trade-offs. The dark lithium gold or any Amprius cell, any silicone anode cell battery, uh, number one, you're not gonna get as much of an energy boost as the, the difference in molecules seem to suggest. You go from six carbon for one lithium down to one silicone for four lithium, it seems like you should have a much, much bigger increase in capacity. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's things they have to do inside this cell to make it less fragile. Okay, silicon anodes are less resilient, less, uh, more fragile than carbon anode, and so that stuff takes up space. And you can go watch Hank Green's video if you want more information about that. The other limitation is that you're not gonna get the current capacity out of this battery that you will out of something like a MolyCell P50B or a lithium polymer battery. It's only rated for like three to five C, which doesn't sound like a lot, considering that LiPo batteries are rated for you know, 100 C, 120 C. But bear in mind, it is a 20 amp hour battery. And so that 3C amounts to like 60 amps, which is actually a fair amount. Uh, the actual limitation on the current capacity of this battery is, is thermal buildup. It can go much higher as long as it's kept cool. And that is something that companies like 
Upgrade Energy are working on. So what we've got here is a wildly expensive battery that nonetheless delivers on the promise of having substantially more energy in the battery for a given amount of weight. And that means that if you're trying to design a drone or an aircraft or, an, or a car that goes further and you're willing to spend money on it, these batteries are hands down the ones to get. So how could I possibly justify lighting a $1,300 battery on fire? I'll show you. Do you see these marks right here? This battery was on a drone that crashed. And although it seems fine, I've seen these batteries light off before and they are no freaking joke. Lipos are never a joke when they light on fire, but these are particularly no freaking joke. So I have to dispose of it. I have to make it safe. And as long as I'm doing that, we may as well watch. I'm gonna plug this guy into a charger. I'm going to lie to the charger and tell it that this is an 8S battery and that's gonna allow me to overcharge it as high as it needs to go until it pops off. Let's do it. It's starting to rain. I mean, I guess that's good considering we're about to make fire. I hope it doesn't rain too hard though. I might have to interrupt this test. 25 volts. So the wire's nice and warm. Uh, it's like a <laughs> 18 gauge wire carrying 10 amps. That's not ideal, I guess. Battery is... Not too hot though. 29 volts, 29 volts. Still no puffing. I take that back. 40. Oh, I hear the sounds. I hear the popping and the hissing. It's gonna go, it's very close. 29 volts. Oh yeah, oh, she's gonna go. I see smoke. I see smoke coming out. It's puffing. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's puffing. Smoking. Wow. It's taking a long time to get there. How did smoke come out and it hasn't blown up yet? Oh, here she goes. What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? It's not lighting off. It's just deforming itself. The charger is still charging. I can't believe it. I can't believe how, I can't believe it hasn't gone yet. What in the dickens? I've really created a problem for myself if this thing doesn't light on fire and burn itself up completely. Do not stand downwind. The fact that the charger is still charging means it thinks this battery is still like electrically intact. I'm astounded. Where's the earth shattering kaboom? Are you having fun right now? You excited about seeing me pop a $1,300 battery off? Maybe you think about joining my Patreon. Link in the video description below. Minimum amounts, $2 a month. It supports that I work that I do here. If today's the day that you're like, okay, Bardwell, you've earned it. Well, tell you what, why don't you wait till after you see the battery go off and then decide if I'm worth $2 a month. Link in the video description below, patreon.com. Look, it's shrinking back down again. What in the hell? 28.6 volts. Oh, are we slowing down? Oh, I know. Oh, it's making some sounds, boy. So I think what happened is I was charging as a 7S, so the charger would go full speed. And I think we reached full charge on a 7S and the charger started slowing down. So now I've set it to 8S, so it's pushing 15 amps again. And hopefully that'll put this thing over the edge. It's making a lot of sounds. The battery is now damaged enough that the charger will not charge it, but the battery has not violently lit on fire. I'm kind of in a pickle right now. Oh, well, hang on. Maybe it's going to do what I need it to do. 
Is it gonna finish itself off? Whew. That's a smell. I need to get, I need to not breathe this. <clears throat> Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Huh. Huh. It didn't fuck up my lens. Thankfully, I have my ND filter on. Holy shit! That's the most violent battery explosion I've ever seen. <sighs> like, normally you get a jet of flame, but this was like poof, sparks, and, and then it just went boom! It just consumed itself all at once. It didn't, it just, Wow, that's really impressive. That's really impressive. Oh, wow. That was like the most kind of blue balls. Oh, will she, won't she, and then boom. Oh, holy shit. Wow. There is nothing left. Like usually there's a little bit of something left after a battery, there is nothing left. It is gone, it's just gone. Wow. Oh my gosh. I needed to rethink what the minimum safe distance was. Uh, I've seen batteries go off before and they shoot a jet of flame, but if you're five or six feet away, then like uh, you don't obviously, like if you're a camera and you're five or six feet away, you'll get a little heat, maybe a tiny bit singed, but you're not in any danger. When that thing went, it went pop and threw sparks three feet in every direction, maybe more. Cause like, I swear it looked like the camera got hit. I don't know if there's like melty marks on the lens or something. That was, and the heat and the, that was the most violent battery explosion I have ever seen. That was so worth, I was so worried it wasn't gonna be worth it. It was just gonna sit there and puff and hiss. And then all of a sudden it just went, you were there. But that makes sense, right? Because we have so many more lithium ions crammed into this battery. The 21 amp hours is 21 amp hours crammed into 1.3 kilograms of package. And so when it goes, it goes. And I guess that's one downside of these batteries. Uh, but if you've got all the money in the world, and you're looking to double or triple your flight time compared to a LiPo, or add maybe 40% more flight time compared to like a Molly Cell P50B. Uh, Molly Cell P50B has 23% less. This has 40% more. That's how ratios work. Just so you don't think I'm being dishonest with you. Uh, then th these uh, Ampreous cells are the way to go. The SAO8s are the pouch cells that we popped off. There's also the SA10, which is a cylinder cell. Uh, and you can look into the specs for them or you can just go to Upgrade Energy's website and buy batteries directly from them. They make, I'm uh, shocked at how far this thing went without actually going. And maybe the construction that Upgrade Energy puts into it had something to do with that. I'll put a link down in the video description. Do you wanna learn more about LiPo safety? Maybe you stumbled across this video and you're thinking I should learn more about lipo safety even though my lipos are not these particular high powered ones. I've got a whole video about lipo safety where I light off a regular lipo battery and you can see just what that's like. I'll put a card on screen and you can check that out. See you there. I, um, this is the biggest battery I've ever lit off. Like I've lit off batteries weighing this much and of this approximate size before but they weren't 21 amp hours. 
So maybe if you lit off a 21 amp hour LiPo, it'd be similarly violent. I don't know. That was a good freaking afternoon though, I'll tell you what.